explosion. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, your microphone down a little bit, please. There we go. That's good. Uh, December the 6th, 1917, a date that no one will ever forget. I was in school at St. Patrick's Girls School on Brunswick Street in grade four. At the time, we were kneeling, saying our prayers, and uh, the sister made us kneel on the chair facing the window so that we didn't get our little socks dirty on the floor. Mm -hmm. she, they were always so anxious about cleanliness that they made sure that we knelt on the little chair. And uh, when the explosion came, the, si the sister was standing at the window with the back of her head towards the glass, mm -hmm. the window. And at that time, they wore a little leather cap Yes. quite close around the neck. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the explosion happened, she came up to the front of the room and it just warned us it was fire drill, no talking. And there was blood coming down from her little cap. So and of course, we were all terrified. Naturally. And she brought us all out in fire drill, perfect silence. Nobody dared to speak a word. And we came out into the schoolyard, the 6th of December, middle of winter, no coats, just as we were in little uniforms. Do you remember how it felt? Well, we were terrified of the noise. And then everything came crashing down around us. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. And my mother had always warned me, be careful of your glasses don't let anything touch them. So I just sat down in the chair and put my hands over my face to save the glasses. Mm -hmm. And then sister got us all standing up and we came out in silence in fire drill. When you got outside, of course, you saw many different things. Do you remember what you saw when you first came out? When I came out, all I saw were the other classes lining up in twos or f as fire drill. Mm -hmm. And then a policeman came on horseback and he said, send the children home. Were you able to get home? Oh yeah, I was able to get home. It was fairly clear, not too much collapse where you were. Oh well, you know, and uh, I had a brand new coat yes. that my mother had made for me for Christmas and I wa wore it that day to school and I wanted to go back and get the coat, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't allow me. And the school, what happened to the school? Well, we did not go back to the school for two years. Mm -hmm. It was badly damaged. Mm -hmm. But my young cousin and I went back the next day and got the coat. <laughs> Showing the perseverance that you've exactly. shown ever <laughs> since, eh? Yeah. What do you remember in addition to those things that day? Do you remember specific things happening? Yes. I left to go home, and uh, when I went to my mother's place and I called, there was no answer. So at that time, the automatic reaction was, if mom is not home, go to Aunt Mary's. So I went to Aunt Mary's. Was she fairly close next door, yeah. perhaps? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And she was there? And she was there and my mother was there with my little brother. So you probably felt a bit of relief at that point. At Very least, much so, Seeing yes. mom and Andy yeah. and yeah. your brother. Now where was dad during all this? Dad was working, and but he came home a bit later, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, a sigh of relief probably that he right. had gotten back. But my uncle did not come home. What was your uncle's job? He was in the North End, at, working in, uh, in an office right up where the explosion happened. And of course, that was totally He was loved. killed, yeah. Yes, yeah. Do you remember exactly how many people the final toll indicated were killed? Was it? Close to 2,000. That's what I recall, mm -hmm. yes. And I also recall that fairly shortly after, of course, there were fires breaking out all over the yes, place. Yes, yeah. Do you remember anything to do with the firefighting efforts that took place at that time? Uh, no, I really wasn't conscious of anything like mm -hmm. that because they always kept those things away from us mm -hmm. as children. Mm -hmm. eh? Did you hear later 
about oh, yes. uh, some of the things that had happened. Yes, we did. What do you we remember? heard we heard that firemen went into burning homes mm -hmm. to take people out if they could possibly get them out, mm -hmm. and everybody admired the firefighters, and yeah. they honored them very much after that. Do you but remember a, a fire engine named the Patricia? Does that yes. Oh, that? yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. What do you recall about Patricia? Well, Patricia was named after a, a little girl who was the daughter of a firefighter. And uh, I had a cousin, Patricia, mm -hmm. so we were very much interested in that one. <laughs> and unfortunately, Patricia was about to set out for the fire, or had set out for the fire, yeah, and of course, yeah. it was destroyed. That's right, yeah. As you recall, it's been restored since, but uh, yes. it was pretty well badly damaged, and mm -hmm. the firefighters were, some of them were killed. Yeah. Do you remember the... Can I I'm just going to throw in a little question here. Okay. Don't mind me, but always look at Will when you're answering. Oh, yeah. The question is, um, why, why were there fires? A lot of kids don't understand that you had uh, stoves, not electrical stoves. But that's you had right. Wood stoves. Can you yeah. describe that, that that's what caused... Yeah, the, they were... Fires? Those stoves were circular and had little doors all the way around it. And... Uh, the little eyes and glass doors, yes. and you see they were uh, uh, operated by the oil. Yes. And of course, when the fire and the heat struck, everything the people burned, many of them in their homes. A lot of the stoves flipped yeah. over. Yeah. And, and well, the stoves just burst apart. Eh? Exactly. Exactly. Do you, can you think of other things that caused fires in addition to the stoves? Were there other things that? Uh, were people using kerosene lanterns or? Uh, well, I wouldn't have been conscious of that yes. at that time. Yes. No. Mm 